planet Saturn, of course, is famous for its prominent rings. But let's start first by focusing on the planet itself, and then upon some of its interesting moons. Saturn is similar in size to Jupiter, though a bit smaller. Both are gaseous planets, which means there's no surface upon which to stand. You'd fall right through, like falling through a cloud. Saturn, on average, is a little richer in hydrogen percentage-wise compared to Jupiter. and It likely has a rocky core surrounded by a metallic liquid hydrogen, much like Jupiter. Interestingly, Saturn has a mean density of only 0.687 grams per milliliter, which is less than that of liquid water. And that's why people say if you put this planet in a large enough bathtub, it would float. Jupiter, with a greater mean density of 1.3, well, it would sink. Both Saturn and Jupiter spin once in about 10 hours. But because of its lower density, you see, this spin flattens Saturn's spherical shape. Look carefully, and you'll see it's not quite as round as Jupiter. How does the size of Earth compare to these gaseous giants like this? Saturn's yellowish color comes from frozen ammonia spread throughout its upper atmosphere. Yes, there's banding on Saturn, just like on Jupiter. Lacking heavier coloring compounds, however, the banding is not so apparent from afar. But it's there, as shown on this close-up image. Where does Saturn appear in our nighttime sky? As with all planets, it migrates through the zodiac constellations. This, of course, corresponds to the ecliptic, which is the plane of our solar system, right? Being so far away, Saturn's orbit around the sun is relatively slow, which means it takes its time traveling through the zodiacs. 29.5 years, to be precise. Here's its path from 2014 through 2023. But why the loopy motion? We can explain this loopy motion by looking at our solar system from way above our North Pole, where you'll see all the planets move in a counterclockwise fashion. Relative to our night sky, that's a west to eastward motion. Don't believe me? <laughs> Look at our moon from one night to the next. You'll see that each night at the same time, its position has shifted eastward. Saturn, similarly, keeps shifting eastward though it takes months to notice this, not days. When we're on the same side of the Sun as Saturn, we move in this direction faster than does Saturn. Like going faster than someone on the highway, it looks like they're moving backward. Look at the tilt of an arrow drawn between our two planets. Yeah, you'll see it tilts upward toward the west. So. Saturn, for a brief time, appears to be shifting westward. When we're on the opposite side of the sun, this arrow tilts downward to the east, and, and much more rapidly. When this happens, Saturn shifts much farther toward the east. See the connection to the years? Here we see Saturn just past Sagittarius, which means it's about 2020. A few years later, it loops its way through Capricornus. After 29.5 years, Earth years, it's made its way through all of the zodiacs, which is to say it's revolved around the sun once. So, your reaching the age of 30 is special, huh? It means you've lived through one whole Saturnian year. Most of the photographs I'm showing you come from the Cassini-Huygens spacecraft, launched in 1997, it didn't arrive to Saturn until 2004. That's a seven-year one-way trip. Now in orbit, this craft has been an incredible tool, helping us learn more about this beautiful planet. Its orbit takes us over the poles, which is how we can see these amazing above and below photographs. At the north pole of Saturn, we see a standing wave. It looks like a hexagon. And as discussed earlier, there lies the red rose of Saturn red here from some color enhancement. Let's take a look at some of the more interesting moons, many of which pop out in this image of Saturn taken from within its shadow. 
The outermost ring, known as the E-ring, is a consequence of a pesky little moon known as Enceladus. I say pesky because it keeps spraying out water through a string of geysers in its southern hemisphere. The water crystallizes throughout its orbit to form the ring, which is essentially a ring of frost. Other moons within this ring, such as Mimas and Rhea, collect this frost on their surfaces so they appear white. A little farther out is Iapetus, which has a bizarre mountain ridge all around its equator, so it looks a little bit like a walnut. I won't go into the interesting theories about how this ridge got there. Maybe that could be a science project for you to look into. Hmm? Did you see the sci-fi movie Avatar? Remember the moon Pandora in that movie? Well, Pandora is an actual moon of Saturn. A small one. Looks like a potato. It orbits just outside the F ring, while its neighbor, Prometheus, orbits just inside this ring. The two actually prevent this ring from spreading outward, and so they're called shepherd moons. Notice that Prometheus orbits faster. Remember your lessons on projectile motion? Yeah, and you'll recall that it has to orbit faster so that it falls around the planet, not into it. One of those dots around Saturn is not a moon. It's us. Here's planet Earth as seen from Saturn. The telescopes on Cassini are just strong enough to resolve both Earth and our moon. Hmm? Saturn's largest moon, Titan, is much, much larger than any of the other Saturnian moons. Here's Titan with Enceladus passing by in the foreground. Now, Titan is the second largest moon in our solar system, the first being Ganymede. It's larger than our own moon, even as you can see here. But Titan is the only moon to host a significant atmosphere, thicker than Earth's even, containing about 98% nitrogen. Oddly enough, its atmosphere is about 1.5% methane, which you may know as natural gas. This is the same stuff we burn here on Earth for energy, but there's no O2 in the Titan atmosphere, so it wouldn't blow up if someone were to light a match. The methane and other small hydrocarbons there, however, they do lead to a fair amount of smog. The Cassini-Huygens craft was a two-in-one spacecraft. The Cassini is the main part and it has the role of orbiting Saturn. The Huygens was a lander. Soon after arriving, this lander was released from Cassini, and it ventured down to the surface of Titan, where we got this and other amazing photographs, plus lots of data about local conditions. Hey, it's a chilly minus 180 degrees Celsius. So much of the hydrocarbons there, such as the methane, are in the liquid phase which can be seen as lakes on the Titan surface. Interestingly, in five billion years, when our sun becomes a red giant and Earth is all burnt up, Titan may actually come to be inhabitable. Ah, now it's time for the grand finale, Saturn's rings. But maybe you should be taking a break first. So I'll put Saturn's rings in the next lesson. For now, Good science to you.